Those darn cheating Americans. That's the only conclusion or one of the many conclusions that you can draw as you parse through the current budget proposal uh, coming out of the executive branch last week or the week before last, should I say. We'll talk about all of that here on the program because one of the provisions is to expand the budget of the IRS by 15%. Now, that's on top of... uh, the separate $80 billion in extra money it got last year. I'm sorry. Okay. What, what do we do at the office? We probably process 600 tax returns in a given season. Let me tell you something. The, the average American is not cheating. First of all, they really can't because the vast majority of tax documents that you get are copied to the IRS, right? Your W-2s, your 1099s, all of that, the IRS gets a copy. So they kind of know the story already. So this suggestion that, man, if we could just figure out a way to get Americans to stop cheating on their taxes, boy, we could solve this budget thing, no problem at all, is a load of you-know-what. Average American is not a tax cheat. The reality is that they're paying their taxes, they're paying their way, and most of the documentation is getting copied to the IRS. But the IRS got $80 billion last year, going to get an extra 15% if the, based upon the current budget. Now, here's the reality of what you need to, the, to know about this. Current budget, of course, is just a proposal, right? Sort of, as we said in the last segment, a starting off point that uh, many of these will hopefully not see the light of day. But it's certainly, I think, an important part of the conversation as you think about the future, because the reality is that that there are certain things that are on the table, and maybe they don't come to fruition this year or next, but the fact is that we've certainly seen tax policy evolve over the years. And some of the concepts that you would look at 20 years ago and say, that's never going to happen. The reality is that it does. And so it's important to kind of keep all of these in mind as you're thinking about your finances and how that might play out. So we're going to get into some of the specifics in terms of tax changes and um tax increases that are included in uh, the the budget because ultimately it, it, you've got sort of competing interests, if you will. It certainly is a higher amount of projected spending. As we said, $6.9 trillion versus the $6.4 trillion that is expected to be spent this year. So in one year, that's like a 10% increase. And it, it, you contrast that with this notion of we're, we're, we're only going to make a very small group of Americans, those top earners, we're going to make those guys pay for what is basically a 10% increase in the entire federal budget. And that Those are certainly competing interests because the math is not there. As we said on the program last week, the top 5% of earners in America pay almost two thirds of all federal tax receipts to the government. So if that's the case, like how much more are you gonna get out of them to close these massive budget gaps? Anyway, be that as it may, here are some of the suggestions. And it fundamentally looks at higher taxes on wage income, higher taxes on investment income, and ultimately higher business taxes. That's sort of where all of these types of tax increase are kind of focused on. So uh, the first one would raise the marginal tax bracket up to 39.6%. Uh, that was where it was in 2017 before uh, some of those tax cuts. Uh, the reality is that it would take the 37 and kick it up to 39.6 effective immediately rather than waiting until 2025 when all of those tax cuts 
uh, that happened in 2017 uh, ultimately uh, sort of sunset. So we would do that and would do that uh, effective immediately. What it would also do is increase the corporate tax rate. Uh, 2017 tax cuts, uh, the corporate income tax rate was 35%, which was actually the highest tax rate in the developed world. Cut that down to it cut that down to 21. This proposal would raise it back up to 28%, bringing the U.S. back uh, towards the top, if you will, of what the worldwide average is for corporate taxes. So income tax rates, uh, obviously that's getting targeted to have that change to that 39.6 number occur prior to when it is going to naturally occur which is in the year 2025. Also corporate income tax rate going up from 21 up to 28. Similarly with with long-term capital gains and dividends, which have long enjoyed sort of a preferential tax treatment under treatment under the tax code. Long-term capital gains currently topped at at 20% plus uh, an extra 3.8% tax that is the net investment tax. So your top capital gain rate is like 23.8%. Uh, the, the proposal would raise that for uh, incomes over a million, uh, would raise that to be taxed as ordinary income. So that would be the 39.6 plus the net investment income tax as well, which is the next thing up. They want to raise that from 38 up to 5%. That applies to passive income, investment income, capital gains, dividends, things like that. So ultimately then capital gain, if you if income's over a million, uh, capital gain would go from uh, basically 23.8 uh, to basically 44.6%. That's a pretty significant jump. Now you may say, well, I'm not gonna have income over a million. Here's where it matters and and where we see it matter more often is that on a particular sort of transaction. So let's say uh, you sell uh, your business or you sell your stock of your company employer uh, and that boosts your income for that year above those numbers. Uh, The reality is then that yeah, instead of paying 23.8, you could potentially pay, be paying 44.6. And, and again, back to the sort of the theme or the concept as you think about these and hear these, these aren't, you know, these aren't for sure, you know, ever going to see the light of day. Um, and certainly some of these are just repeats of some of the tax changes that were proposed over the course of the past two or three years when uh, it wasn't a divided Congress, when it was a more, uh, you know, kind of Democrat Congress, and and they didn't pass in in that situation. So I, I don't know that many of these will ever see the light of day, but I think it's important to think about where might these things go? And and certainly when you think about that net investment income tax, which was a newbie that was sort of thrown in, and now they look at it as, oh, well, we can just shift the rate up on that, and that's going to raise, um, ultimately raise additional income. Combined with the fact that the, the capital gains rate, there seems to be some chafing on that being a lower or preferential uh, tax rate. So obviously stay tuned on that. Similarly, the stock buyback tax, another one that just started with the inflation, the the, the, the oddly named Inflation Reduction Act uh, that passed last summer, uh, established a new tax, a 1% excise tax on the total value of stock repurchases or stock buybacks. Uh, now they want to just take that 1% and make it four. Uh, why not? Uh, once it's on the books, folks, that's the problem, right? Once it's on the books, then it's easy to just run up the amount of uh, the number on it. So stock buybacks, they want to basically quadruple that. Um, And uh, so so you can argue back and forth as to who benefits on stock buybacks, but it's hard to uh, say that that's not in sort of the investor's best interest because what a company does a stock buyback means that there's less shares outstanding. So as the value of that business goes up, well then, there's less shares outstanding, then more of that gets reflected in the appreciation of those shares that are still outstanding. Uh, Another one, and and this is one that's floating around, um, and that is to end the step up in basis at death. And this one is pretty significant because that notion of eliminating the step up in basis actually gets to taxing 
a, a, a appreciation that has occurred in an investment that was never sold and then someone dies and now you've got to pay the taxes. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that one when we come back from the break. So stay tuned with us uh, through the break here on Dollars and Cents with Joel Garris of Nelson Financial Planning. 